tones. They're not forced in any way. They just, they just so, you know, just beautiful. How old are you, Kaya? 28. Really, if it's really for a fellow your age not to try to, to force them like that, that's very nice. Uh, have you studied singing very long? About eight years. About eight years, uh-huh. Uh, let me make some comments about it. I, uh, you got more involved than as you went along. Uh, I mean, it started, you were a little concertized, and then you probably remember that. <laughs> and uh, a lot of singers don't feel comfortable uh, in moving or in acting. Are you essentially, have you been trained as a singer as opposed to being an actor, or have you had both uh, backgrounds? I've had some acting, I've had a lot of dance. A lot of dance, okay. Uh, well, use some of that. You probably feel free moving, uh, you know, and you could... Uh, if someone tells me what to do. If someone tells you what to do. <laughs> I know what you mean because that's the way I feel too. But, uh, you know, I guess maybe age helps, you know, you get a little bit of confidence and you, you see how other people do it and say, my gosh, I can do that too. So you start becoming inventive using your imagination. Imagination is a key word in, in performing, folks, and in particularly music theater. You've got to have imagination because that's what makes people interested in you. You must have individual personality and that comes from imagination. And maybe some of that comes from confidence, you know. But uh, the more you do this, but try. You don't get confidence unless you try some of these things. And then when you get a reward from the audience or from your director or something, say, that's good, keep it in, or great applause for what you did, then that gives you more confidence in what you're doing. Um, I would uh, want to try to encourage you to, to try to uh, work at a slightly brighter sound without having to push the tone. If you can, you can again, uh, uh, learn to project the tone a little bit better with a brighter sound, it will be, enable you to sing in a larger hall. Because I'm afraid with an orchestra, you might have a little trouble being heard unless uh, they had microphones on the stage. I mean, in a, in a large musical, of course, I'm saying. Uh, for this hall, it's fine. We can hear you real well. And again, I, I hesitate to tell you that because I don't want you pushing your voice at all. But uh, you sing this in C major? Was this in the original key? Good. Because it comes in B flat in the published keys and the, uh, yeah, right. Too low. That's, good. Good. <laughs> That's even low. You'd like it up a whole step more, right? Um, I wouldn't be surprised that in certain shows they do that if, uh, for the tenor. Uh, this fella, do you know the character at all? Have you ever played Freddy? He's, I mean, he's a little bit, well, I won't say he's a simple guy. I mean, he is. <laughs> he's, he's come and, and handed some uh, flowers. He just bought a bouquet of flowers for Liza and handed them to the, the uh, uh, lady at the house there. I forget her name. And she takes them in and comes back and says that Eliza doesn't want to see anybody right now. And he says, that's all right. I'm just going to stand out here and wait till she does. And he sings this song, you know, and he sings uh, a very simple, plain guy who's just full of love for this girl. And... Uh, I think throughout the verses, uh, there are, the song is, I believe, A-A-B-A, -A 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 -A, uh, anyhow, there's four little uh, sections of it. Each section should grow, or at least the last section should be a culmination of the first three sections, so that we feel that you have arrived emotionally at the end. These pieces, folks, there's a difference between crescendoing <coughs> musically and crescendoing emotionally. And when you can back down musically and dynamically, and you should still keep the crescendo going emotionally, throughout the piece. The piece must grow. It has to start somewhere and get you somewhere emotionally. Otherwise, we are concertizing. We're just standing, even, I shouldn't even say that because that's really letting, uh, it's talking down about concertizing. In any song, every song is a scene and it should grow emotionally. It should be, there should be a reason for it existing. And that takes us from one place emotionally to another place emotionally either forward in love or backwards in some, maybe re-thinking re, uh, about some hate or reliving some experience, but it does have something happen emotionally, and this is what we want to see and hear. You don't have to uh, sing louder to have it be emotionally louder. Am I making sense on that? Do you, think, do you, do you yeah. Yeah, understand that? So this is what I'd like to hear more from you in the end of the song, in the last... Uh, 16 bars, a little bit more involvement emotionally, even though it's not going to be louder, it's going to be, you're going to be so involved in it that, oh, I don't care as long as I can be here on the street where you live, seeing this place, smelling the aroma, and just living that moment, uh, because this is very important, the biggest thing in your life up to that time, obviously. Uh, so try a bit of it. We have time to do the whole thing one more time. And, and uh, uh, start at the beginning. You've just given, given the flowers in, and uh, you can, uh, in fact, uh, it can be somewhat uh, in, inward at the beginning in the introduction, and then, uh, how does that, I, I have often walked down the street, people. It does not have to be uh, a large 
uh, you know, step out here, go over this way, and then come uh, slowly over. You might stop for a section and, and sing out a little bit, uh, referring back to the house a bit, and then walk over this way a little bit more. I'm just to give you some general ideas. And remember, grow emotionally throughout the piece. Right? Try this. You want to try higher? Do I do the high chair winner? All right. <laughs> But you have to just be completely overwhelmed, you know, uh, at the end. I'm presented on the street where you live. I mean, you keep keep involved in that as high as you can emotionally. Again, while you don't have to be high vocally or loud vocally necessarily. So that the excitement has built all the way to the end of this thing. And when you get done, you must feel the emotion and the magic. If you want this magic to go across the footlights and across the orchestra pit, you have to feel it. Magic does not happen. Uh, it isn't magic. <laughs> you must feel those vibrations inside of you. And they will, by osmosis, by, by some connection, the audience will feel them too, if you're feeling them. You know? So you, you just have to forget yourself in this, you know, and, but your movement was much better. Hold your gestures as long, when you're, when you're in, in something, hold it to the end of that, that thought pattern, and then, and then don't, don't just drop them unless the music says to do this, you know, uh, here a lark in any other part of town, doesn't chat men cool. Have them be fluid if you can. That's another aspect of dance, right? You don't want to just leave, take something out and then drop it, you know, because, so have it meld into the next gesture that you're doing, right? whatever they turn out to be. And uh, otherwise, I think that was improvement. Again, a pleasure to hear you. Thank you very much. <laughs>